All right, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Malik here with another video. I'm really, really excited to get into this one. We've got Ryan Birchfield here. We've been trying to figure this out for about three weeks, just when I could talk to him. Um, but essentially, just super excited to start this new series uh, that I'm going to be titling Speaking With. And what that means is that I'm just going to be talking with teammates, you know, guys I meet along the way of my journey that just have incredible stories and that I really want to share. Um, so with that being said, he's got to run, I've got to run, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Hi, my name is Ryan Birchfield. I am from England, as you can probably tell. Um, basically, I've been playing soccer all my life. I started off playing for a local team when I was about five years old. Progressed through the ranks, made it to Ipswich Town Football Club, uh, made it to their academy. Unfortunately, was released at 12 years old. And then, at that point, realized I'm going to come to the United States. Um, and then pursued my career through here at Lipscomb University, and I graduate in May. And that's where we are right now. And what is your degree again? And I'm a biology in GF. Nice. So really quickly, Birchie, if you just want to kind of describe, I guess, your youth career. Um, and I've got down, like, what was your biggest challenge? But I think I've heard you talk about the time you've been cut before. So I guess just yeah. getting more into that. Yeah, so my youth career started, I started kicking the ball when I was like two, basically as soon as I could walk. And then I started playing competitively about five years old. Uh, I was just playing for like a Brazilian soccer school. And then things got really competitive around eight, nine years old, where it was town, a club back home in England. Um, they recruited me to go play for them, and then I made it through the development ranks, all the way up to the academy, into uh, age 12. Mm -hmm. And then at that age, like, obviously there's people that are six foot tall, and there was me, and I was five foot eight, or whatever I was, I was, I was tiny. So basically I got cut, as my biggest challenge, I got cut because of my height, my size, my strength, all that kind of physical aspect. Mm -hmm. But don't let that hold you back. I'm still here. So, so yeah, like you said, you, you got cut from your team, right? Um, but you eventually ended up over here overseas. You started with the JUCO in California, is that right? So, so how difficult was that decision to come play overseas versus trying to pursue other teams in England? So for those of you who don't know, my dad is American, so I've always had like a little insight into uh, American college sports. So. It wasn't that hard, but I mean, I say it wasn't hard. The decision for me to come out here was terrifying. It was honestly one of the biggest things I've ever done in my life. They've known my family over there and that kind of stuff, but it was the best decision of my life at the same time. Um, so I was just Googling away, Googling away, and I found this company called First Point USA. Um, and it was like a, an agency where you go through like these rounds of trials against other boys that want to go play out in America as well. And after about three or four rounds of trialing, um, they was like accepted me to say, yeah, you're good enough to come out and play over there. Um, and then you have like a, a personalized agent that basically, um, for each of those trials also, you were filmed against the other boys so they could uh, make like a highlight reel for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then your agent would edit it, put the best bits in there, and then send it out to all the coaches and contacts that they have as agents. Okay. And then through that was how I got my office to come out here. So if you did have a word of advice, obviously it was a bit easier with you, with your dad being American and having a bit more insight into, you know, American sports and American college sports in particular. Is there like a, a good word of advice or just kind of some tips you have for guys that do want to play overseas um, coming from, you know, outside of America? Yeah, I would say definitely talk to people, mom and dad, friends, family, everything, just to get the pros and cons of everything for sure obviously what comes with the pros is always cons. Um, I would say be prepared, it's a big step, it's a different lifestyle on and off the field obviously. Um, be prepared physically, there's a different type of soccer out here in England and in most of Europe as far as I know. We're not the first bunch but the Americans will tell you they need to run so be ready for that. Um, and be ready for school as well, it's not 100% soccer like people back home think it is. I'd say it's more like 30 to 70 and 70% 70 in favor of school, so be prepared for that as well. So do you want to just kind of talk about just kind of that? Like I said, you came over at the JUCO level and eventually made it up to Lipscomb, which is at the Division One level, so what was that transition like for you? It was really big, actually. I didn't think it was going to be as big as it was. Um, so my JUCO in California, Feather River College, we were actually number one in the nation, so we were 
we thought we were really good, yeah. which we were for the Juco level, and we were very good. Um, there's some really good players in our team, um, but Division One is definitely, definitely the next step. There's just the difference between the two, I'd say, is the commitment level and the athleticism. Like, Juco, you'd have some good players, but they weren't like the fastest or the strongest. But the D1 level was a really good level, and I think that's a great level to be playing at for every level. So a perfect segue into this next question. Yeah. Even though Division One is a very good level, there's mm -hmm. very athletic, very good players. You know, plenty of schools. Yeah. Um, do you think it's kind of a barrier to get into the program, pro game, whether that be you know trying to play here, trying to play overseas? What is your take on that? I think that would be dependent upon where you go to school and the setup that they, that is at each school. So obviously, the, you go into a bigger school, you probably have more of a chance of making a pro due to your being in the spotlight more, you're higher ranked, you make it to the NCAA tournament, you're in the spotlight more of the, of the professional coaches. Um, and then if you're on the other end of the, the spectrum, I'd say maybe it is a potential block like for you to get to become a pro, mm -hmm. just because of you not being in the spotlight so much and maybe you're not improving as a player even because you're playing at a lower standard. Um, but I think <laughs> the NCAA does what it can but based on the setup with the MLS draft, only having, I think it's like 96 players that can make it. Yeah. And then uh, you obviously have USL to fall back on, but even so, most of the time, they have players coming through that didn't make it in academies and that kind of stuff. So I don't know if it would block you. It could, it could help you, it could not. I don't, I'm kind of on the fence right now. I don't really know to put that one. I got you. Um, well, either way, whether it is a barrier or not, you know, if it's helped you out, you yourself have been able to find ways to get into at least trials at the pro level. So just kind of want to hear about those experiences. Yeah, so I had two, I went to um, Reno uh, 1868. Okay. Reno 1868 um, in Nevada, went to a trial there. There was an open trial. Mm -hmm. uh, the sound was pretty good, I'd say so. There was a lot of boys from like D1 schools. I think there was some guy from here, some guy from like, the, the Northeast conferences. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sacramento as well. That was an open trial there too. Okay. And that was pretty much the same thing. Yeah. But that was that was that was through my old head coach. So it's not always about what you know, it's about who you know. Yeah. That would definitely help. I'd say that. Okay. Yeah. And then obviously you are graduating here soon. Mm -hmm. um, you've been through these pro trials. So just kind of based off your experiences, what would you give advice to you know players like me, other college players that are wanting to make that step to the next level? You know, what would you advise them to do now, or maybe even looking forward? Um, if I was you, I'd stay in shape, straight up first thing, be ready to play at any time. You never know when a, a trial could pop out. I had a trial come up in two weeks, I, had to be, I wasn't quite in shape for it, so I had to bust myself a little bit to get back there. Um, so I'd say stay in shape. I would say keep in contact with everyone you've known throughout your whole college career within the soccer world because that's how I got my trials, through people that I know, not necessarily just through my ability. So. Definitely keep in contact with everyone and yeah, just stay ready, obviously. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was bound to happen with us, obviously, interviewing you. You have to talk about yourself a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. As a player, what do you think your greatest strengths and some of your weaknesses are? Uh, my weaknesses is definitely my, my strength, I'd say, my, my physical aspect. I, I'm not the quickest player in the world, definitely not the strongest, but you gotta do what you can do. There's other ways you can get about that, like one matter and you know, messy, obviously. Smallest players, they find other ways to make that, to make their weaknesses, their strengths. And I suppose that is probably what my greatest strength is: is being able to be aware visually, where I'm on the ball, off the ball, just know where everything is going on at all times. I think that would probably be my best strength. For sure. So I can combat my weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely agree with that. Um, Perchi is probably. By far one of the best players that I've ever played with. I'm serious. <laughs> one, of, one of the best midfielders I've ever played with for sure. All right, well, Bertie, really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And it's been kind of a, a rigorous process trying to get together, so I'm glad okay. we can get this done with. Um, but yeah, I really am looking forward to this series, guys. Bertie is just the first of many, which I'll hopefully be able to interview and just kind of share their insights on the game that we all love and we're all trying to, you know, work our way through. So that being said, Bertie, thank you again. Absolute pleasure. We'll Appreciate hopefully be seeing this guy more on this channel. Um, so if so. not in the professional ranks, we'll be watching. But I'm uh, gonna go ahead and end the video here. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. 
Um, if you did enjoy, go ahead and leave a thumbs up for Birchy here. Um, if you guys want to continue watching this journey, just kind of seeing you know similar videos to this and kind of how you can improve as a player and what my journey is looking like, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Okay, we're back really quickly. Um, I actually forgot to do this before <laughs> before we ended the video, but Birch has some really exciting news that he would like, would like to yeah. share and just kind of a bit more of an insight into trying to get onto that professional level. So, yeah, so basically, where I am right now is that my old head coach in my old school, Feather River College, um, shout out Don Williams, he uh, has put me in contact with a company called Path to Pro Soccer, and basically, they are trying to get me signed to them as one of their clients to move me up to the next level. So yeah, I'm now in the process of looking at contracts, um, discussing my options with my parents, obviously that's very important, and then yeah, trying to take the next step through maybe Path to Pro Soccer, which they more look into the USL type level more than anything. So I think that's maybe where we're ending up, hopefully, fingers nice. crossed. So that's essentially just like an agency that's just kind of going out of their way yeah. through a contract to kind of help you figure out where you can get a pro contract. Exactly.